Hey YouTube, I'm back with another video. In this video, we're gonna be doing a rendering comparison between the old Threadripper X399 on the left. Um, so this is the 2950X 16 core 32 thread. This was a pretty popular CPU for those who are doing video production back in 2018 when it launched. It was the successor to the 1950X, which is the very first Threadripper, very first 16 core 32 thread consumer desktop processor at the time. And I feel that Threadripper is really kind of where the Ryzen 9 7950X sort of fills the gap. It kind of bridges the gap between the Threadripper Pro and what used to be Threadripper with the mainstream desktop. So uh, at some point, I have a feeling in the future, Threadripper will come back to consumer desktop because right now it exists only in the Pro market at the workstation level. Um, so there really isn't anything that's in the HEDT or high-end desktop uh, market segment in this current period of time. So it seems like if you want something similar to HEDT and you're building brand new, you definitely want to check out the Ryzen 9 processors, whether you're talking about the 7950X, which is the one we're showing here, or the, the 7900X, um, which is a bit cheaper, So, but it kind of depends on the use case. But if you want high-core high thread count and you don't want to deal with uh, potential compatibility issues with the big core, little core uh, that Intel offers on the 12th gen and now 13th gen, although I do think that 13th gen has largely resolved a lot of those issues um, because those e-cores do clock higher, um, there's less of a performance delta now. But I think in general, the X670E platform is a, I don't want to say it's a complete replacement for Threadripper, but it definitely is worth considering for the price point. Um, because Threadripper, the motherboards are typically priced at the same uh, as what you'd find at the upper end of the X670E that you can get on the consumer desktop. Uh, we're gonna take a look at and see if it's worth looking into or also if you're just wanting to upgrade. Because I, I do think that if you're on a four or five year old Threadripper, it might be worth looking into the Ryzen 9 as a potential upgrade. But what we wanna see is those who held on to Threadripper and are now considering upgrading because you are reaching that four to five year mark in terms of the upgrade cycle, you know, it is worth definitely considering. So what I have for you guys today is a DaVinci Resolve comparison. We're gonna be comparing the stock performance of the Threadripper 2950X. Uh, if we zoom in here, you guys can see there is the 2950X 16 core from 2018 with its 32 threads. Uh, and then on the right side, we have the Ryzen 9 7950X 16-core processor with all of its 32 threads. Just to illustrate, we're going to see like which one's faster at rendering 4K video footage. And we're just going to do 30 frames per second. We're taking a source footage from an old uh, 4x3 4, 480p Dragon Ball Z clip. This is the arrival of the Ginyu Force. So we're going to be rendering that, upscaling it to 4K. And we're going to see um, how these two compare. Basically, a four-year-old Threadripper, which was priced very similar to the Ryzen 9, um, but it was four years ago. So let's go ahead and run these. All right, so there, there we go. We want to zoom in a bit so you guys can see what's going on. So I want to show while that's going, what's going on over here. So the Threadripper, as you can see, it clocks up to about 3.8, but it looks like the maximum is 4. Point, almost 4.2 gigahertz, I would say. Uh, let's try to find the power consumption. So here's the temperatures. The die did hit 100 C. Uh, and the core voltage. So the package power is about 166. Maximum 174 watts on the Threadripper. And it is running pretty hot. But what you'll notice is it's still going. Uh, it's about to finish. So it's almost done. And it took one minute and seven seconds to complete. So now let's go look at the AMD Ryzen 7000 results. So the Ryzen completed the work in 36 seconds. 
36 seconds if we look at the core clocks you can see that the maximum was 5.755 gigahertz so roughly almost 5.8 gigahertz and then the average was about 4.3 if we go down here to the temperatures you know the hottest it got during that render was 88.9 celsius the average was 46 celsius so thermals are pretty well behaved and just uh, so people know these are both air cooled the Noctua NHD 15 is cooling the Ryzen 9 processor and then I am using the Wraith Ripper for the Threadripper processor so both on air uh, and then you see here thermal throttling no the temperatures were pretty much well behaved there it is again for those wanting to see so the die average the maximum was 88 Celsius you can see it in the third column there so both of them were equipped with 64 gigabytes of memory so the third bar was running at 32 megahertz on DDR4 cast latency 16 64 gigs that was on quad channel configuration uh, so it's four dims out of the eight that are available and then the Ryzen was using two DIMMs for 32 gigs each, so 64 gigs at 5600 megahertz, cast latency 30. So uh, it's a big improvement, right? Like 30, it took 36 seconds, 30, yeah, 36 seconds to complete on Ryzen 7950X versus one minute and seven seconds for the old Third Ripper 2950X. So I guess what this shows is that the power consumption is roughly the same. They're both 16 core, 32 thread. It shows the massive improvement over the last four years in terms of what you used to have to do on a high end, a very large die, like a large processor in general, versus now you have a really small, you know, five nanometer process. If you guys are looking for production workstation, well, I guess not really workstation, but if you're looking for a HEDT equivalent, on the mainstream desktop. I do think that the Ryzen 9 is definitely worth considering. I'm um, just from this test alone. I, I I definitely think it's worth upgrading and this is the reason why I actually got one was to replace my old four-year-old Threadripper system over here. So yes it's less lanes but you have PCI Gen 5 and Gen 4 as well as eight lanes of Gen 3 versus 64 lanes of Gen 3 on this one. So you know that CPU is definitely going to be able to benefit in terms of the higher bandwidth on a per lane count. So, hope you guys found this video interesting. The platform is 64 lanes of PCI 3 versus 44 usable lanes that are a mix of Gen 5, so 24 Gen 5 to the CPU, and then you have 12 lanes of Gen 4 from the chipset, and then 8 lanes of Gen 3 from the chipset. So, it's kind of spaced out, but you're, you're 20 lanes less if you go with the new Ryzen, but I think the performance delta kind of speaks for itself and sort of justifies the upgrade. Of course, there is always Threadripper Pro, but that's going to be very, very expensive. You're paying roughly $100 per core if you're going to adopt the Threadripper 5000 series or Threadripper Pro. So who knows, maybe next year there will be an HEDT. There'll be a return of Threadripper on the consumer ecosystem. For now, this is the best that they've got. So if you guys like this content, if you like this video comparison, uh, please leave a like. Uh, it really helps me out. And if you want to see more CPU comparison content like this, as well as videos on GPUs, such as Intel's ARC A770, uh, feel free to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you'll know when the next video is available. And with that said, I'm going to go ahead and get on out of here. And once again, I thank everybody for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.